The Senator from Grayson County, Senator Carrico. Arise for a point of personal privilege. Senator has the floor. Mr. President, uh, members of the body, yesterday I sat and I listened intently to some harsh chastising of, uh, by some members of our Capitol Police and our State Police about what happened on Saturday. I personally know what it's like to be in a riot situation, having spent 15 years in the Department of State Police. I uh, was in Virginia Beach when the riots took place. We were in the coal fields when the coal strikes took place. We were in several locations across Virginia when uh, demonstrations are held and have been a part of that organization whenever they were asked to assemble. I can assure you these men and women are not political, they're not prejudiced, and they uphold an oath in which they say that they will do these things regardless of age, sex, gender, or anything uh, to uphold and to make sure that the Commonwealth and the grounds in which the Commonwealth own are safe. I personally know that uh, for those 15 years of protecting the Commonwealth taught me a lot about what life is all about. I didn't speak yesterday because I really didn't have any idea exactly what went on, just some preliminary reports. Uh, it was hard to hear what was going on in Richmond when I was in Freeze, Virginia. But as I returned to the Capitol, I heard uh, many comments about the things that occurred. And then hearing the harsh uh, criticism on this floor, I was uh, really concerned about what I was hearing. So um, as many of you probably, I received a video from an individual who um, was promoting the fact that uh, the police were uh, out of line and, and out of uh, character that day. And I want to point out some things that I saw in that video and some things that I found out. As many of you, I think all of us received this from uh, uh, the clerk. And uh, one of the things that I want to point out in here is that, you know, all of these assemblies have to have a permit. And outlined in that permit in subsection G, it says all non-state sponsored events without exception will be conducted at the bell tower. Nothing that is a non-government event can be on the south portico of the Capitol. So everyone as they approached this event that applied for this permit had the understanding that this had to be done at the bell tower. It also says all authorized functions are expected to be conducted within an approximately one hour and during a time of day that will not interfere with major pedestrian and traffic uh, uh, vehicular travel here on the Capitol. As I watched this video, it was real interesting how the uh, video tape began because it began with the tactical field force and the TAC team in their uniforms pictures of them on the Capitol steps, and then it went to how the whole day started. And I want to, I want to lay out that timeline. At 1.53 p.m. that shows them marching up 9th Street uh, at uh, Bank Street to the Bell Tower. And at 1.55 p.m., instead of remaining at the Bell Tower, which subsection G says you've got to do, they walked up to two Capitol Police officers blocking the sidewalk, coming to the Capitol portico, and said there's no violation of walking. So they walked right past the Capitol Police, the two Capitol Police officers standing there saying it's not a violation of the law to walk. They occupied the sidewalks they, that is spelled out that you can't do. The Capitol Police in the video kindly asked them not to do it, and they walked past them anyway. You see the Capitol Police radio that they're walking by, and as you see the large crowd emerging upon the Capitol steps, you see several others, two or three Capitol Police officers, then begin to gather around the crowd as they take the Capitol steps. At 1.58 p.m., they once again ignore the request by the Capitol Police to uh, leave the portico 
as it clearly spells out in the regulations that all of them get that they can't be on. At 2.19 p.m., almost a half an hour later, they are asked once again, leave the, leave the uh, portico, go back to the bell tower where you're supposed to be and where this uh, demonstration is supposed to take place. At 2.42 p.m., the, re uh, the remaining 32 people were still sitting on the steps. They were still being warned to leave and being asked to leave. And then the state police come in. As, you, as I said in the beginning, it shows the state police in their tactical uh, field force uniforms, their tag team uniforms giving you the impression that they were there to intimidate them, to not let them come in. Where they were, they were out of sight, out of mind, nowhere to be found until the crowd got unruly, until the crowd advanced on the Capitol, until the crowd refused to lose, leave. The Capitol Police gave them ample warnings, gave them ample time to leave, but they chose to stay. And I heard it say that we're the men of the house and we should be able to uh, defend our wives and our children. Well, I am a father of a daughter and I have a wife. And I fully support their ability to uh, stand up for what they believe in. But I tell my children and I tell my wife, remember, it's easier to stay out of trouble than it is to get out of trouble. And if you choose to sit there when you're asked to leave, when you're being clearly told that you cannot be there, there is consequences. So I rise today in defense of the Capitol Police and the State Police who protect this Commonwealth, who protect you and I when we are in this body, that they did exactly what is spelled out in the rules and in the law, and they did what we have asked them to do, and they did not do it without prejudiceness. There were men and women sitting there, and they took them all. And I just want to say that I'm proud of them. I think they did a great job, and we should be proud of them too. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you, Senator.